Photosynthesis is an almost magical process that makes two important things, food and oxygen. Photosynthesis has the word photo, and that means light. The light that's required for photosynthesis usually comes from the sun, and it powers the whole reaction. The synthesis part means building, and in this case, we're building food. The chemical reaction down here shouldn't be too scary to you. Let's start with the middle, which is this arrow. It means the things on this side are converted or changed into the things on that side. So these are the things over here that are needed. They're called the reactants. Let's take a look at them one at a time. Six molecules of carbon dioxide. Plants need carbon dioxide in order to build food. Where do they get it? Well, they get it from the air. There's carbon dioxide mixed in as part of air. Plants pull carbon dioxide right out of the air. We'll see how they do that in a later slide. The next thing is six molecules of water, H2O. Water is usually found in the soil and can be sucked up through the xylem of the plant and there it can reach the leaves where the, uh, so the xylem are the tubes that carry water and the water is going to make it up to the cells which are right here that do photosynthesis. You can tell this cell does photosynthesis because it contains these green organelles called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts, look they're all packed tightly in here. There are lots of chloroplasts doing lots of photosynthesis. So now we have the two things we need, carbon dioxide from the air, water from the soil. And now we're going to use light energy to build two things. This big molecule, C6H12O6, is glucose. Another way to say that is food. That's the food molecule we wanted to make. And glucose gets stored, C6H12O6, in the plant for later. The oxygen, however, is just an interesting byproduct or waste product of this process. And the oxygen gets released back into the air. Without it, you and I wouldn't be alive. They provide the oxygen that we breathe through the process of photosynthesis. Here's another way to look at the chemical reaction for photosynthesis. It's the same exact chemical formula, but this time what I've done is I've taken each of the reactants and I've shown you what the molecules look like. So six carbon dioxide molecules. Here are six carbon dioxide molecules. There's one, there are six total. We also needed six water molecules. Here's a water molecule and you see we have six total. When I press the space bar, they're going to move and rearrange the elements to form glucose and oxygen. This is what the chloroplasts actually do. The power to move this reaction forward comes from the sun. Notice that glucose is a really, really large molecule. In fact, that's important. It stores the energy. That's what we were trying to do. It makes food. It's a food molecule. Remember, the oxygen down here is going to be removed as a waste product later. I told you earlier that I'd show you exactly how plants actually take in the carbon dioxide, and this is where we're going to do it. Here's a leaf over here, and what I'm going to do is slice the leaf and look at it at the sliced end. And this is the picture you get. So this is the top of the leaf, and this is the bottom of the leaf, and we're looking at it very close. Leaves are very thin, but they actually do have some thickness. And we're looking at the entire thickness of a leaf. Right here, this pink and purple thing coming in is a vein. That would contain the xylem from earlier that's delivering our water. So now we know how the plant cells get their water. It comes up through the xylem tissue. But how do they get their carbon dioxide? Well, plants have these specialized structures called stoma. You may also see uh, them called stomata if there are more than one. On the edge of them are what are called guard cells. These guard cells don't actually guard anything. You can think of them like their lips. They open and close the opening. The openings allow carbon dioxide to come in from the air. And the carbon dioxide is then grabbed by these photosynthesizing cells for, our, for the reaction. When they make oxygen at the end, which is a waste product, it can also be excreted out those open holes. So why are the guard cells even there? Why would you ever want to close or open the stoma? Well, it's obvious to op if you had it open, you can do photosynthesis, but there's a cost. If those holes are open, water will evaporate and leave. So you'll have water loss. That's not good because water is needed for photosynthesis. So on hot days, sometimes a plant will decide to shut down photosynthesis, close its stoma by sealing off its guard cells and preventing it from getting too dehydrated.
Once the weather cools down or more water is available, they may open it back up again and continue photosynthesis.